it's no secret that one of my favorite print-on-demand products is blankets. We have a slight obsession in our house with them and I have honestly lost count of how many I have designed and sent out to production with Printify to add to my collection. I've always gone with one in particular, but recently a question came up in my Simply Thrive Club community asking what the difference is between a few of the options that seem pretty similar, particularly when it comes to the terms velveteen, minky, and plush. So for today's video, I'm going to compare three different blankets, and if you stick around until the end, I'll also share with you some potential niches, design tips, and listing recommendations so that you have the best chance of having amazing success with blankets. In case we haven't met yet, my name is Mandy, and as the owner of multiple six-figure businesses, including Etsy print-on-demand shops, my goal is to provide you with strategies to simplify the journey and scale your business faster so that you can stop the overwhelm, start making progress, and thrive with your print-on-demand business. The three styles that I tried were all from Printify providers. I sampled the Velveteen Plush Blanket from Spoke, the Velveteen Minky Blanket from Pick the Gift, my personal blanket bestie, and the Soft Polyester Blanket from Colorway. They all finished in production and arrived within a day of each other, which took about a week total. And the base sizing for all of them are within about a dollar of each other in production costs based on the Printify premium prices. Pick the Gift's shipping is slightly higher compared to the other two, but otherwise very similar in terms of actual production costs. With each of these, they are printed using sublimation, which means the color fuses with the fabric and therefore will remain vibrant and won't fade from washing. I also intentionally used the same design for each of them so that we can get an accurate comparison. So let's check them out. First up is Spoke. You can see this one has a shorter nap on it, so the fabric here is a lot shorter. And so you don't get quite as much of the white gapping here, but you still get some. It's a little bit thinner, so I would say this is the thinnest of most of them. The stitching on it is really nice. The edging on it's really nice, so there's no bleeding of the color from different sides. And overall, the print itself looks really good for a blanket of this type. Again, this is not going to be like a typical fabric because these are the velveteen. And so because of this plushness, because it's on a white base, you are going to see this and that's normal. But if I were to have done this in a lighter color, like a light pink or a light blue, you wouldn't notice this quite as much. Darker colors will always be more obvious. Then we have my favorite, which is Velveteen Minky from Pick the Gift. As you can see, the plush on this is a little bit thicker. So that means you are going to get more gapping on it. So you will see a little bit more white through that. Again, it's normal. And in some ways, you can actually push the fabric down so it's not as noticeable. Whereas this shorter fabric, you can't push it down as much just because it is thinner. You can see there's a slight color variance, but again, that's normal and can happen depending on different printers. But overall, it's still pretty close to what my original was. And I will say that this has a much plusher feel, so it gives the impression of being thicker. Stitching on here is again really nice. It's got the double stitching along the edges, so it stays intact really well. And the coloring, there's no bleeding around the edges. So overall, again, really nice quality here. And then finally is colorway between the three. This is probably somewhere in the middle in terms of weight. And so you can see that coloring is pretty similar. The print itself is at a slightly different angle. So this one is sideways compared to these are straight up and down. And so the landscape on this one is a little bit different in terms of how it's printed and how you design for it. The thickness and stitching, again, is pretty similar to the other two. I'd say slightly thinner than the Pick the Gift and slightly thicker than the Spoke. The one thing I noticed on colorway though, and it's probably why they have a slightly lower rating, is that they're not as careful on the color bleed. So when they 
they printed this, you can see some of the purple is actually kind of smeared, I guess, on the back a little bit. And so if I were a customer or if I were ordering this as a sample, I would, this is one where I would probably get a reprint done for it. I probably won't because it's not that big of a deal for this sample, but just again, kind of a quality thing to be aware of. Colorway between the three of these are rated the lowest. And so I suspect that this is probably part of that. So who wins the battle of the blankets? Well, even after sampling all three varieties, I still have to give it to my OG, the Pick the Gift Velveteen Minky Blanket. The color is muted very slightly compared to the other two, but honestly, if you looked at the original design and the mock-up, you probably never noticed it unless you laid it next to the two other comparisons like I did. Out of each of the samples, it felt the thickest and the most plush. I personally sell these in my dog mom shop with a price point of $32 to $72 depending on the size and then I usually have a sale discount going on in my shop on them as well. So the final selling price is a little bit lower than that. One thing I thought I'd mention too in terms of durability, these are from Pick the Gift. These are some of the previous designs that I've done with some of my own artwork and you can see these have been washed and well loved and well used for a very long time, at least a year if not more, and they are still in fantastic condition. If anything, I actually say that these are products that get better with time because as you wash them, they get a little bit fluffier and the nap where it arrives really pressed down and compact, especially like this one. You can see it's a lot more compact when it first arrives. Once they're washed a few times, they kind of fluff up and then they stay that way and they just hold up really, really nice. As I've said before, we have lots of these in our house and they've all done really well. They are a favorite in our household for sure. Let me know in the comments if you have a different choice that you would pick for your own shop. Now when selling blankets like these, I have a couple tips that I recommend for your listings. First, I recommend marketing all of these as lightweight blankets that offer warmth in any season. They're not going to be super, super thick heavyweight blankets, but I can tell you that the Pick the Gift blanket absolutely provides plenty of warmth and coziness even when it gets really cold and below zero here in Minnesota. Also in your listing, I recommend that you mention that these are single-sided prints. Pick the Gift does have a separate product option for two-sided printing, but it doesn't eliminate the white base completely, so I just don't think it's worth that added cost that you'd have to pass along to the customer. Just make sure you make it clear for your customers that it's only on one side. Along with that, I also recommend that you let customers know in your description that the base is white on the blanket itself and that the gapping makes it visible through the design, which is a normal result of the printing process. That way, if you get any questions about it or if a customer has a concern after they've bought it, you can refer back to the listing. In terms of niches that work particularly well for blankets, one of them is baby milestone blankets. New parents love to use these for photo shoots at different milestones. You've probably seen them on Pinterest or from your friends that have had kids. They have the baby laying on the blanket and then they can move an item or an object to kind of show how old they are in the picture, whether it's one month or two months. And you can apply a variety of different themes to this. If you need some inspiration, I recommend doing a Google search for top baby nursery themes and also scrolling through Pinterest for ideas of what's going to be popular for this style of design. Going along with that, as kids get a little bit older, are kids' blankets. Kids' blankets can do really well as long as you target specific themes and I recommend including personalization. There are a lot of kids' blankets out there, so to really stand apart and differentiate yourself, you're going to need to find ways to make it unique and also appeal to customers and make it a little more special for them. Another area that does really well are engagement, wedding, and anniversaries. This is a huge market, and when you can incorporate specific themes and personalization, it's a great way to create options for celebrating and gift giving. Whether it's a date or a name or location, think about how you can make it special for those customers looking for items related to those niches. And also, don't forget to think about existing niches in your own shop. A lot of times I hear from sellers who add products simply because someone on YouTube said it would be a good idea and you could make thousands. 
But the key here to doing that and making it work for your shop is to make sure you are actually taking these product ideas and applying them in ways that work for your shop and existing customer and audience so that it builds cohesion and not just a mishmash of random products with random niches. Incorporate products like these within your niches where they make sense. And finally, some design tips. As previously mentioned, to differentiate yourself in the marketplace, incorporate personalization whenever possible. This can be as simple as a name, a date, a location, anything that you can offer that allows your customer to make it a little more special. My other recommendation here is to avoid generic patterns with no specific niche. They may be beautiful and you may sell a few, but they will be much harder to pinpoint a specific buyer in order to get any sort of significant sales volume. An example of this is my dog mom shop. I have a dog themed design that's a cute pattern, but it's not tied to any specific breed or customer identity other than to have some dog themed items within the pattern. I also have this same exact design style, but with the addition of a specific dog breed image as part of the pattern. This allows me to then also leverage those dog breeds as keywords in my SEO strategy as well. The difference, all of my dog breed specific listings have sold multiple times for those blankets. The generic design, never sold. That is the power of designing specifically with a target customer and niche in mind and creating something that is more closely going to resonate with them and grab their attention. A few other design tips here also include designing with lighter base colors because the base of the blanket is white. Lighter colors just inherently do well. You don't have to do this. And as you saw the darker color on my blankets were acceptable. It's more so just a matter of if you prefer a less noticeable white showing through. And last but not least, if you are creating a smaller design for a larger product, I know that can sometimes be challenging when you're designing for something in Canva, for example, and trying to get it to work for a very large design template like they are for blankets. And the trick here is to export that design as an SVG from Canva. You do have to have a pro account in order to export as an SVG, but what this allows you to do is convert your image to a scalable vector graphic SVG, which means it can be made as big or as small as you need it to be without losing resolution integrity. This works particularly well for blankets, again, because they are so big as a design template. I hope this has been helpful for you. If you want to learn more about my strategies for thriving in your print-on-demand business, make sure you've got the notifications turned on for my channel so that you don't miss out on any of my content. And in the meantime, be sure to check out the dedicated playlist with my full print-on-demand masterclass course right here on YouTube as well as my time blocking series for an even deeper dive on the critical steps for success. Thanks for watching, my friend. I'm so glad you're here and I'll see you in the next one. If you're looking for more ways to continue the journey and stay connected, I'm so excited to invite you to my brand new membership, the Simply Thrive Club. Unlike other programs, this is not a course. In fact, it's not even a program in the traditional sense. And that's because all of the steps that you need to build your print on demand business can be obtained for free on my channel through a variety of videos and playlists that I've put together specifically to help you on your journey. My in-depth course is a not behind a paywall. So instead, this new membership is all about community with ongoing challenges to drive growth and a support system for accountability to keep going. It's goal setting to maximize your pockets of time and stay organized so that you can thrive even amidst a busy schedule. And it's action taking with expert resources and tools in order to master skills necessary for scaling faster and more efficiently. That is where the magic happens in your print on demand journey. Your willingness to clarify your goals, commit with consistency, and adapt your mindset and your approach so that you understand what will work and what won't. This totally new platform is a community that is off of social media and away from spam and distractions, including a community app. 
I've created over 80 plus professional mock-ups with more on the way. There are monthly accountability challenges because did I mention I'm all about consistency? I've included the ability to request quarterly comprehensive shop audits and live group calls each month where we can talk about all things print on demand, time blocking, setting realistic goals, finding process efficiencies, and so much more. Be sure to check it out. And in the meantime, keep going, keep learning, and keep growing on your print on demand journey.